Well, hi, second graders. I am going to read Miss Cuddy is Nutty. So, here we go. Trying to hide the image so you can't see me, but it doesn't want to work. Here we go. How do you like them apples? My name is AJ, and I hate it when my school gets attacked by monsters. I should explain. It all started the other day when our new teacher, Mr. Cooper, came flying into the room, and I do mean flying. Mr. Cooper thinks he's a superhuman but he's not a very good one because he knocked over the garbage can and fell on the floor. Stuff spilled all over the place. We all ran over to help him, but Mr. Cooper had a black plastic bag in his hand and a letter A on his cape. It is I, he announced, Apple Man. Apple Man, asked Ryan and Michael. Well, who ever heard of a superhero named Apple Man, asked Alexia. Who rides a skateboard all the time? Today we're going to learn about apples, said Mr. Cooper. Why, asked Neil, who we will call the nude kid, even though he wears clothes. Because it's part of the common core, said Mr. Cooper. Got it? Core? Apple? Nobody got it, but Mr. Cooper didn't care. He took some apples out of the bag and passed them around. When I was a kid, we used to say an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Mr. Cooper told us, You threw apples at doctors, I asked. Then everybody laughed. Even though I didn't say anything funny, did you know there are 7,000 kinds of apples grown all over the world? Mr. Cooper asked us, but only one is native to North America, the crab apple. I know something about apples, said Andrea Young. This annoying girl with curly brown hair, if you put an apple in water, it won't sink. Apples have a lot of air in them. Well, very good, Andrea, said Mr. Cooper. Andrea fist bumped her friend Emily, the big crybaby. Then she smiled the smile that she smiles to let everybody know she knows something nobody else knows. She thinks she's super smart. Why can't a truck full of apples fall on her head? Mr. Cooper told us it was time for math. If there are six apples in a, on a table and you take away four of them, how many do you have, Mr. Cooper asked. Andrea was waving her hand in the air like she needed to be rescued from a desperate or from a des desert island. Two apples, she said, because six minus four is two. Then she made her smiley smile again. No, said Mr. Cooper. If there are six apples on a table and you take away four of them, you have four of them, of course. You just took four of them away. But, 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 we all laughed because Andrea said, but, which sounds like but, B-U-T-T, even though it only has one T. Ha, 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 na, 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 boo, boo, I'm Andrea. Mr. Cooper taught us lots of interesting stuff about apples. Did you know that gravity was discovered when an apple fell on some guy's head? Me neither. That's when the most amazing thing in the history of the world happened. The morning announcements came over the loudspeaker. Well, that's not the amazing part, because the morning announcements come over the loudspeaker every morning. The amazing part was what happened after that. I'm not go to, going to tell you what it was, okay? Okay, I'll tell you. But you have to read the next chapter. So na 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 boo boo on you. Chapter 2. A Surprise Guest. Our school secretary, Mrs. Patty, does the announcements every morning. We pledge the allegiance, and then she tells us the weather. What's for lunch? And who has birthdays that day? It's pretty boring. At the end of today's announcements, Mrs. Patty said, All students and teachers, please report to the all-purpose room for a surprise assembly. 
We had to walk single file a few hundred miles to the all-purpose room. Mr. Cooper made us sit. Boy, girl, boy, girl. So we wouldn't sit next to anybody we liked. I had to sit between Andrea and Emily. Our principal, Mr. Klutz, climbed up on the stage. He has no hair at all. I mean, none. He used to have hair. But it fell out or something. Everybody was buzzing. Well, not really. People don't buzz. Bees buzz. It would be weird if people buzz like bees, but we were all talking. Mr. Klutz held up his hand and made a peace sign, which means shut up. <laughs> Thank you, he said. We have a very special guest at elementary school today. We all buzz some more, and you'll never believe who walked out on the stage at that moment. Nobody. Cause, because somebody rolled out on the stage. In a wheelchair. It was Mrs. Ella Mentry. Ella Mentry is a really old lady who used to teach at our school a million hundred years ago. She must have been a good teacher because after she retired, the school was named after her. There's a big sign on the grass out front that says, Ella Mentry School. One time, when Mrs. Mentry came to our school, things got out of hand, and there was a food fight. Pickle chips and meatballs and burritos and tater tots were flying through the air. It was cool. We gave Mrs. Mentry a standing ovation. A standing ovation is when everybody gets up from their seats and claps their hands. When you stand up and clap your hands, it's a lot better than when you just sit there and clap your hands. Nobody knows why. At first, I wasn't going to stand up, but all the teachers stood up. Then a few kids stood up. And then a lot, of, a lot more kids stood up. And then I felt like I would like a, I felt like I would look like a dork if I didn't stand up. So I stood up. While we were clapping, Mr. Klutz dragged out a big white piece of cardboard. It was about the size of a door. Mrs. Mentry has brought a gift to the school today, Mr. Klutz announced. She's giving us a door, I asked. Er, she's giving us a door? <laughs> Sorry, boys, I needed to make it sound like it was a question. She's giving us a door, I asked. Well, what do we need a door for? We have plenty of doors. It's not a door, Arlo, Andrea said, rolling her eyes. She calls me by my real name because she knows I don't like it. It's a check. Mrs. Mentry is donating money to our school, dumbhead. I wanted to say something mean to Andrea, but all I could think of was, your face looks like a door. In my head, I was wondering why Mrs. Mentry's check was so big. My parents use checks, and their checks are about the size of a dollar bill. Why would anybody need to have a check the size of a door? I can imagine how, how big Mrs. Mentry's wallet is. <laughs> Mr. Klutz handed the microphone to Mrs. Mentry. Thank you for that wonderful welcome, she said. I will always have a special place in my heart for this school, and to show my appreciation, I would like to give this to you. Mr. Klutz turned the check around so we could see the other side, and this is what it looked like. <gasps> what a lot of money. What? A million dollars, I shouted. A million dollars, shouted Alexa. A million dollars, shouted Ryan. In case you were wondering, we were all shouting, a million dollars? Everybody started yelling and screaming and shrieking and hooting and hollering and generally freaking out. You should have been there. Chapter 3. A hundred thousand pieces. Nobody could believe elementary was actually going giving the school a million dollars. Man, that lady must have a ton of money to be giving away so much of it. No wonder she needs such big checks. There are a lot of zeros in a million. We gave Mrs. Mentry another standing ovation. Then Mr. Klutz made the shut up peace sign again, and we all got quiet. We can't thank you enough, Mrs. Mentry, he said. But now we have a problem. What are we going to do with this money? That's a problem? If you ask me, a problem is when you have no money at all. I'll spend it for you, shouted our 
librarian, Mrs. Rupee. Everybody laughed. Tell you what I'm going to do, Mr. Klutz said. We're going to have a contest to decide what to do with the money. Ooh, everybody, ooh. Go back to your classrooms and think of some ideas for what we should do with the million dollars, Mr. Klutz told us. The class that comes up with the best idea will be the first to use whatever we buy with the money. I'll announce the winning class at the end of the day. We walked a million hundred miles back to our classroom. So, Mr. Cooper said when we were seated, what do you think we should buy with the million dollars? Pizza, Ryan shouted. We should have a giant pizza party for the whole school. Yay, everybody else. Ryan should be in the gifted and talented program for coming up with that idea. I mean, who doesn't like pizza? Do you know how many pizzas you can buy with a million dollars? Mr. Cooper asked. We went to the board and we wrote the number one million on it. He told us a pizza costs about ten dollars. Then he divided one million by ten. A hundred thousand pizzas, shouted Andrea. That's a lot of pizzas, said Michael. I can only eat one or two slices, said Emily. Me too, said Alexa. We can freeze the rest for leftovers, said Neil. And that's what we do at home. May I ask where we put all the leftover pizza? Asked Mr. Cooper. Where will we put all the leftover pizza? I know, said Alexa, we could buy a thousand refrigerators. Yay! Everybody shouted. And where are we going to put a thousand refrigerators, asked Mr. Cooper. Well, in the playground, Michael shouted. Yeah. Yay! Everybody shouted. As long as we're getting all those refrigerators, said Neil. Well, let's buy a million dollars worth of ice cream. I like ice cream better than pizza. Yay! Everybody shouted. Why don't we just buy a million dollars worth of candy, I suggested. Then we won't need any refrigerators. Yay! Everybody shouted. We were coming up with some really good ideas. I was sure that our class would win the contest. I hate to tell you this, said Mr. Cooper, but Ella Mentry did not give us a million dollars to buy junk food. She wants us to buy something useful for the school. We need to think outside the box. I didn't see any boxes around. If I was in a box, I know what I would be thinking about, how to get out of the box. We could buy a racing car with a million dollars, suggested Michael. Maybe we could buy a football team, suggested Neil. How about a skate park, Alexa suggested. Why not give the million dollars to a school that doesn't have any money, suggested Emily. Our school doesn't have any money, I told her. Well... We have money now, said Emily. We have a million dollars. But if we give the million dollars to a school that doesn't have any money, I told her, then we would be a school that doesn't have any money again. Well, maybe we should put the money in the bank, suggested little Miss Perfect. Well, then we could watch it grow. Banks are boring, I said. Well, what if we did something educational with the money, suggested Mr. Cooper. Ugh, I said. He said the, the E word. Educational stuff is boring, I said. Well, A.J., said Mr. Cooper, what is not boring to you? I tried to think of something that isn't boring. It was hard, because most stuff is boring. TV, I finally said. TV isn't boring. That's when I got the greatest idea in the history of the world. I know, I said. We should buy one of those big flat screen TVs for our class. That would be cool. Yay, everybody shouted. A flat screen TV doesn't cost a million dollars, Mr. Cooper told us. For a million dollars, we could buy a whole TV station. Well, I said, then we should buy our own TV station. That's it, shouted Mr. Cooper. AJ, you're a genius. Hey, how come this book is called Miss Cuddy is Nutty? But it doesn't have anybody named Miss Cuddy in it. That's weird.